Good evening. On behalf of Mrs. Reagan and the entire Board of Trustees of the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation, let me welcome you to the Reagan Library and the Air Force One Pavilion. For those of you that I have not met, my name is Joanne Drake, and I currently serve as the Chief Administrative Officer of the Foundation. It has been my privilege to serve President and Mrs. Reagan for over 30 years now, especially in including his second term, four years at the White House under President Reagan. It is truly wonderful to see so many friends, old friends, and I look forward to meeting some new ones this evening in our reception afterwards. This tribute has been a long time coming, 32 years this month. And before we get too far into the program, I want to give a special welcome to a few people here tonight. Although it is probably out of protocol order, I want to go first to the reason we are gathered and recognize the family members of our fallen agents. Lois Robinson Fulham and her daughter Janice Cash, Diane Bajek and her family, Joanne Labarge, her son Brandon and his wife, and the other members of our families that are here this evening. And if I do not have your names, I apologize, but know that for me, you are the most important people here this evening. We are especially pleased this evening to have with us tonight in what is the 150th year of the United States Secret Service, Mr. Joseph Clancy, who is the current director of the United States Secret Service. We also have special agent in charge of the LA field office, Joseph Beatty, with us. The deputy special agent in charge of the LA field office, Lorenzo Savage. The resident agent in charge of the Ventura office, Doug Cohen, and his wife, Sherry Robertson, who is also the assistant to the special agent in charge of the LA field office. That must be a fun household. <laughs> California Highway Patrol's chief of the Coastal Division, Reginald Chappelle, and I believe his wife is here. Sergeant Greg Gonzalez from the Simi Valley Police Department and his wife. Assistant Ventura County Sheriff Steve DeCesari and his wife, and Jan Gilhooley, President of the Association of Former Agents of the United States Secret Service. Also with us is a former colleague of mine from the White House Advance Office, Bill Brennan and his wife Jeannie. Bill was the lead staff advance in 1983 during the Queen's visit to California, and he's now the Executive Director of the California New Motor Vehicle Board. Finally, special thanks to our bagpiper, Bill Bedecker and Reverend Don Johnson for participating in our ceremony. As you all know, we are here this evening for a very special purpose. And I want you to know that we at the Reagan Foundation are very honored to be unveiling this plaque. Honestly, I can't think of a better place to put it. When Ron Williams, who is here tonight with his wife, who is now with the former Agents Association, and who served as the lead agent for the Queen's visit in 1983, contacted me last summer. It was with very little reluctance and Mrs. Reagan's immediate blessing that we agreed to accept this memorial to three men who died in the duty of their country, Agents George Labarge, Donald Robinson, and Donald Bajek. As I look out at the group tonight, I see faces that served on PPD or in other divisions under President Reagan and it is likely that you know how fond he was of those who work for the United States Secret Service. Not only did he like his agents, but he had a great deal of respect for them and the work they did. And we at the Reagan Foundation and Library still do. It is a privilege for us to have you here, an honor for me to be associated with each of you that has served my president, and any president for that matter. This is hallowed ground for us as President Reagan is buried not far from where we are right now. I know that he would be extremely pleased that we are commemorating the lives and contributions of three of his agents. And I thank you all for allowing us this opportunity to thank them for their sacrifice. I'll now turn the program over to Reverend Don Johnson. One of my favorite theologians, Fred Rogers, 
of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. I quote him often. He said this, life is deep and simple. What our society often gives us is shallow and complicated. Our task today here is deep and simple. It is to remember to pay tribute to those we love, Donald Robinson, Donald Baycheck, George Patrick Labarge. For some of us here today, our task is that unquenchable, unforgetting love of a wife or of a child for a fallen father or a mother for a fallen son. For others of us, this love is uh, even more distant and yet full of memories, painted with meaning and connection through friendships and associations from all around the world. Memories paint vivid pictures on the tablets of our minds, how we hang on to the abundance of certain thoughts and feelings associated with remembrance is quite a mystery. And yet at the same time, being so full of those memories, there's that hollow emptiness of certain parts of our hearts. And that push and pull still is an experience inside of us at times that we really don't know what to do with. Sarah Bed Brethnack said it like this, both abundance and lack exist simultaneously in our lives. They're parallel realities. It is our conscious choice which secret garden we will tend. When we choose not to focus on what is missing in our lives, but are grateful for the abundance that's present. Love, health, family, friends, work, the joys of nature and personal pursuits that bring us pleasure. Then the wasteland of illusion falls away and for a brief moment we experience perhaps a little bit of heaven on earth. So on March 5th, 1983, while the queen was en route, to visit that majestic place of beauty, Yosemite. Who knew that right alongside royalty would also be such tragedy? The word disillusion means to be stripped of illusion. And on that day, the illusion that this happens to others and not us, uh, this happens to someone else, not me, that illusion was stripped and brought up close and personal for these families who we are honoring today. Even after 32 years, there are still feelings, thoughts. And those who say time heals, they don't quite really get that because the truth is only the proper use of time brings healing. We pursue that wisdom of Solomon which says, there is an appointed time for everything. A time to give birth, a time to die, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, even a time to dance. By the way, that's the same guy who also said in the same breath, a time to heal. The same guy who also said that life under the sun is full of vanities, it's chasing the wind, it's emptiness, and therein lies that turning point of perspective, life under the sun. If you simply look at this horizontally, you probably will never gain quite the perspective you need to deal you must look at it a little bit more vertically. As a young ministry student in the San Francisco Bay Area in the 60s, trust me, God had to have a sense of humor. Why he ever placed me there during that era, I will never, never know. Let me just say there was a lot of praying going on. And in those days, we would go into that beautiful city and you talk about a confusing place to go. So many bridges so many ways into the city. And then once you got into the city, hills up, hills down. I mean, there's no doubt that it took Moses 40 years to get through the wilderness, only because like most of this men, we wouldn't stop and ask for directions. And I will tell you, on one particular day, because the Fairmont decided to build a beautiful tower with a glass elevator that would take you to the top, and in the top room was a place called the Crown Room replicas of crowns of queens and kings from around the world. And when I got in that elevator, we started rising. Oh, there's the San Mateo Bridge, way down there. There's the Bay Bridge. That's where the Golden Gate, there's Coit Tower. There's that crookedest street in the world. And all of a sudden things started gaining perspective. I have to feel that when you get that perspective, 
you must understand that God looked over the balcony of heaven and he saw three quality men who served well and said, I have to have those men in my squad. Like the great husbandman of heaven, he looked over and said, I gotta have those flowers in my bouquet. And as they looked over the balcony of heaven, he allowed us to see that his choice is wise, that he's far too kind to be cruel. He's far too deep to have to explain himself. Uh, I do know that feeling as a pastor where I wanted two different results and they were opposite each other. I wanted the person to live, but I didn't want them to suffer. I didn't want to lose them, but I knew it was better to let them go. It so perplexed me, I sat down and wrote a little poem. It goes like this. It's like trying to stretch the canvas over two different frames, wanting both to be beautiful and neither to be stained. And in the process of tearing, the meaning you discover of having a tear in one eye and a twinkle in the other. When I thought of these wonderful families who are here today, I had to say to myself, this is a mixture of so many wonderful feelings, and yet those other feelings that you've carried for so many years still have bear and influence. Let's focus today on that garden of abundance. I want you to do four things. Reflect, harvest those beautiful thoughts. Life isn't fair, but it's good. A good Texas friend of mine said, fair comes to town once a year and takes your money. There is no answer to why things happen the way they do. Don't compare your life to others. You have no idea what their journey is all about. And when in doubt, take that next step. Life isn't tied with a bow, but it's still a gift. And when you reflect that fashion, then it helps you to remember and hang on to that smile, to those memories, to that touch, to that nuance. I read the reflections online. I went backpacking with him. He was such a great guy. He was such a nice agent. I served with him. Those kind of reflections in a positive light only feed fuel to the heart to remember those good things. Thirdly, release those other things. Let them go, little by little. Hang on to those good parts. Release those things that continue to haunt your mind in terms of wanting to recapture what can't be, which is behind us. And then lastly, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to recognize and honor this special place that these men had, not only in your lives, but in the impact of this country. They served with honor and distinction. Unlike the third grade teacher, when she got sick, she got a card from her class which said, Dear teacher, we wish you a speedy recovery by the vote of 14 to 13. <laughs> Dear Lord, I hope I get better recognition than that. I will tell you, after being introduced to this entire setting through Ron Williams, you might want to say a prayer for me if you know him, because that guy is a piece of work. I spent a month with him one day, and when I get to heaven, I expect some recognition for hanging around with that guy. Heaven is going to be a wonderful surprise. You're going to be shocked at the people who are there that you never thought would be there. You're going to be shocked at the people who aren't there that you thought would be there. And you're going to be shocked you're there because it is only because of the wonderful grace that's offered to us. These brave men made a difference. Let me give you a quick quiz. Name the five wealthiest people in the world. Name the five Heisman Trophy winners in the past five years. Name 10 people who won the Pulitzer or the Nobel. Uh, name the last decade's worth of World Series winners. How'd you do? Okay, now take this test. List a couple of teachers who made a difference in your life. Name three friends who really helped get you through something difficult. Name a half a dozen heroes that have inspired you. Let me make it even more personal. I walked out of my house in Irvine, California, 
ran into a neighbor across the street. He said, Don Johnson, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to the Reagan Library. I barely started into the story. And he stopped me and he said, I know those guys. I know those guys. Speaking of these three Secret Service agents. The people who make a difference are not always the ones who make the most money, who have the most credentials, who have the most awards, but the ones who care, who protect, who do their duty. We honor these brave men today in such a way that they will never be forgotten. They will always be recognized, and they will always have a place in our hearts. Let's bow together. Wrap your loving arms around us, families, and bless each and every one of them. Give them courage and strength to take from their past and incorporate the great, wonderful memories into a bright, bright future. And I do ask, Lord, that we would certainly see to it that these men are remembered in the fashion that they will be remembered today with great distinction and honor. And for all of these blessings, we give you the glory. We ask that in the name of our Heavenly Father. Amen. Jan. I'm honored to stand before you this afternoon representing the almost 2,600 members of the Association of Former Agents of the Secret Service. As their president of the board of directors of the Association and the Foundation, it brings great honor to me and this board. Also here today from the board of directors is the vice president, Ron Johnston, who also chairs the foundation. District director, Rich Caruso, and his wife, Kathy, of Region 3 is here, and Tom Harrington and his wife, Irene, director of Region 4, where we find ourselves today. Additionally, there are many members of the association here today who represent all that is good about our continuing commitment to each other and to those that have worn the star of the Secret Service. I thank you all for coming here today. Director Clancy, thank you for taking the time in your schedule to come here today. It speaks well of you as the type of leader you are. We welcome you representing the agency itself and for the respect you show our honorees. To the SAC of the Los Angeles Field Office, Joe Beatty, thank you, and to your Assistant Deputy Special Agent in Charge Lorenzo, we thank you for showing up. And Doug Cohen, the Rack of, of Ventura, thank you, in whose district we are, we are today. The many other members who have come here, as you heard them mentioned, Ronald Chappell, Bob Horvath, Cal Miner of the California Highway Patrol, who is now the Chief of Kalinga, who was driving the lead car that day, Steve De Cesare, the Assistant Sheriff of Ventura County, our respect and our thanks to all of you and, our, and your wives for those who were able to attend and to your wives for letting you come out on a Sunday to be with us. The bond of law enforcement at all levels is something that we all hold dear. I want to thank the staff of the, of the library here for their, this work in this project. We're indebted to you. It was very funny because the same word Joanne used was the word that I had as I thought it made so much sense. Many of us here today and the Secret Service shared a special relationship with the Reagans, and the Reagans shared a special relationship with the Secret Service. I cannot think of a finer place for this commemoration to hang and be viewed by those who come to see the legacy of the Reagans. In her book, When Character Was King, Peggy Noonan wrote, and I quote, Ronald Reagan liked Secret Service agents a lot. He respected their professionalism. He understood what they did for a living. He knew their job was to be cool and brave. They were masculine men of the old school. He liked to talk with them and swap jokes. It was their job to do the right thing when there was no time for the wrong thing." End quote. Is there a better place in all the world for our brothers to be remembered than with someone like Ronald Reagan? In 1983, as an agent in the New York field office, I recall when the word spread about the horrible accident that took the lives of Pat Don and Don. It hit us all so hard nationwide. I knew each of them. I had worked with them on many of their trips to New York City for a UN or on the campaign trail. 
That is something that is always the uniqueness of the Secret Service. We knew each other. We, we traveled together, we worked together, we ate together. We knew each other's lives. They were respected agents who did their jobs. They showed up ready, willing, and able to do whatever they were called upon to do. And in the world of the Secret Service agent, there's no higher compliment. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, when you have chosen your part, abide by it. Do not weakly try to reconcile yourself with the world. The heroic cannot be common, nor the common heroic. We are here today because these men were anything but common. They were heroic. I'd like to just take a half a second here and recognize Ron Williams for his dedication to this project. It's gone on for years, and I know how proud he is today with its culmination. We're equally proud of you. Your devotion to this speaks so highly for the respect we have for all those worthy of trust and confidence. On behalf of this board of directors and those in the past who have been involved, we thank you. To the Reverend Don Johnson, thank you for your words. May we all find some comfort in them. To Bill Brennan, who took the time to come here today. This also speaks highly of the type of man you are. We thank you very much. Without going any further, I would like to ask the family members who've traveled here today to come forward. Joanne Labarge, her son Brandon, his wife Sarah, Lois, Lois Robinson Fulham, her son Matt, and her daughter Janice, and her husband Ben Cash, and Diane Bajek, and Laura Lamb, if you would all come forward. I would also ask Ron Williams to come forward with the families and ask them to gather around here. Ron, please come in here, and if you would all do us the honor and let Ron get a hold of this. As this plaque is unveiled, may we now have just a moment of silence in the honor and remembrance of Pat, Don, and Don. Thank you all. And as we are ready to move on, we now may adjourn to the reception as the piper plays our way out.